Hey there, thanks for coming back and checking out our channel and our experience with the Harvest Right Freeze Dryer. We will be doing a, another cycle today and this is our first one with using food that we plan on eating. We have four trays of items. We have a shrimp chow mein, two trays of spaghetti with meat sauce, and the final tray is sliced apples. Now, we have also pre-frozen all of this food in our freezer upstairs in preparation. We've heard that that can help cut down on time in the freeze dryer. Since we're already running our freezer upstairs, we thought we'll just keep everything in there until we're ready. So now that we are ready, I figured document the experience, the process that we have to go through to set up the freeze dryer. It's not intense or anything, but mostly just a step-by-step -step guide about doing this. We're not going to change any settings on this since you know we haven't had a lot of experience with doing that so until we see and get comfortable with how that works we'll just keep them at factory settings for the time in which to freeze dry and see how that works for us also when the cycle is done we hope to show the process of packaging the food and using mylar bags more than likely for everything. Maybe not for the apples. We might just keep those in mason jars or something more convenient to get to. And hopefully with uh, measuring and weighing the items and making sure that we put on there what everything is. We'll move the camera in a little closer so you can see the food that we'll be putting in the freeze dryer and also how to start it up. Okay, so to run a cycle, we are going to first ensure that our door is shut and it's not because we had it open for a natural defrost. So go ahead and close that. And then we will be hitting start. And there it tells you that it is going to be cooling the vacuum chamber and wait 15 minutes before loading any trays. Um, currently, we are at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, so when we come back to load our food, we will check and see what the temperature is. So here we are with our food items. We have two trays of spaghetti with meat sauce, a tray of shrimp chow mein, and a tray of sliced apples. Now, as I said before, all of these items are pre-frozen upstairs, and if anybody is wondering, if you've never frozen apples before, normally they brown, but if you throw in a little bit of lemon juice or probably anything like citric acid wise, will help them from browning. So as you can see, that did a very good job. So we'll move right over to get this stuff into the freeze dryer. So we went a little over the 15 minutes. The temperature seems to be rising a little bit as I've been watching it, probably keeping it around 20 degrees Fahrenheit now. And as the screen tells you exactly what to do, we're gonna go ahead and load the food into the freeze dryer and then close the drain valve. Um, as a reminder, that drain valve is right here. And while we're right here, we'll just go ahead and close it. And open our door. And nice and cold in there and uh, you can see even a little bit of condensation on the glass here so I'll go ahead and get these loaded up and come back so getting our last tray in here we'll go ahead and close the door up and then I always do like to do a confirm check to make sure that that is sealed and it is all right, so we've now loaded our food into the freeze dryer and we've closed the drain valve. So let's hit continue. Oh, and as another note, it does tell you right here about the do not mixing frozen with non-frozen food. So quick reminder about that. And begins the process. So I look forward to uh, showing what this looks like through each stage that I can catch it at, and if not too many of those, and at least at the end result. See you. All 
All right, it's the next day and the freeze dryer is still going with our cycle. We're at 21 hours overall and 18 hours for just drying. I figured while this is still going, I would take the time to go over some of the packaging options that we probably are gonna use for the meal food that we'll be packaging and also show like the equipment that came with the machine to put those bags together. So the first box that we have here is a box of Mylar bags. And this is the 10 by 14 bag. Um, this would definitely be for like full meals. Like this probably would feed my husband, myself and our son while we're out. And uh, it gives the option to put of course your contents and the date that you packaged it and I mean plenty of other information that you can fit onto that and of course the whole back of the bag is just plain silver so you could write all over that too if you wanted to put directions or reminders to make sure you take out your oxygen absorber whatever information you find beneficial for yourself. The next size is the eight by 12 bag. So that is probably a meal for one person, unless you're just not a very hungry person and can share that. Um, and the same, same information has a spot for contents and the date that you packaged. Not much difference, just size. And the last box we have here are the oxygen absorbers. Now in this pack, I believe there are 50 and they come in 10 packs per bag. Now that's probably, probably to make sure that you don't have any of these packages exposed to air too long. And um, the biggest thing that I've noticed is that it just says you don't wanna expose those to oxygen too long because they'll do their job. They'll absorb it and then the absorber will no longer be active for its purpose in your food storage. The last item we have is the impulse sealer that comes with the freeze dryer and that is basically to seal all your bags. It can seal the mylar bags and it can also seal clear plastic bags. So I'll bring the camera over here to see it just because it's kind of heavy. This is the impulse sealer that came with the freeze dryer a plug that just plugs into the outlet and then on the side it has a dial for setting your heat temperature and sealer based on what it is you're sealing. Um, at this point when you are ready to use it as far as I can tell you just press down and hold it for however many seconds it tells you to do that. Um, there is a small piece of paper that comes with it basically letting you know that when you're using mylar bags you want to change this setting to a seven so you would turn this dial all the way around so you got to seven and um, if it was clear plastic pouches you would want to put them at a four or five and it does give some slight directions on making sure how to use this appropriately so here's a quick little shot of that. All right, so after 26 hours, our trays are finally complete. I'm gonna go ahead and do warm trays, mostly because this just makes them easier to handle. And I'm not sure how long that'll take, but we'll check back here in a sec. This process, as I said, took quite a bit of time with the noodles and everything on those three out of four trays it probably did consume a lot of energy to get the moisture out of that. Um, now that it's done, we are going to move on to the packaging stage. And I brought down a kitchen scale for measuring and trying to get an even amount of food in each bag. And I brought down a Sharpie marker to label the bags with. So let's see how this goes. All right, so our trays are nice and warm now and we need to open drain valve to vent. So we're gonna come over here, open our valve, make sure our hose isn't in the water and here we go. So doing that releases the pressure on the door and allows you 
to open it up easily. All right, opening it up. And we've got our two spaghettis, our shrimp chow mein, and our apples. Now we'll probably go ahead and start with our food items. And then in the meantime, we'll just keep this closed when we're not doing it just to help keep oxygen away from it. Our first tray out here is spaghetti and meat sauce. And as you can see, it has significantly shrank. That's definitely to be expected because of the amount of moisture that is in a noodle and that would come out. So what we're gonna do is weigh this on the kitchen scale that we brought down. And I had pre-measured these trays and they're about 710 grams. So seeing what the difference between the weight of this versus that, we'll know how much is on there and how to divide it best. All right, so we are tiered here and we can go ahead and put our spaghetti on. And our weight is about 1,125 grams. So um, roughly from before to now, the spaghetti has is like a third of its weight, which is unbelievable. This is, I mean, it's amazing. So what we'll do is figure out how much we want to put in each bag. I'm guessing that we'll probably quarter this and put them into bags and go ahead and seal them up. Okay, so that could not have worked out any more perfectly. 120 to 125 grams in each bag, pretty even, and that's awesome. I mean, I if I did the math correctly, each of these bags should be two servings of food, and that's awesome. We used the smaller bags this time, so that's the eight by 12 bag. And we got two, four, six bags, technically. I, I mean, that would feed probably my husband and I and our son for six different meals. So let's keep going. So I did want to show what the consistency of this is, like how easily it breaks. Like I'm just, it's like paper almost, like lightweight, thin, and it just, like feels lighter than ramen. It's crazy. Okay, so these three bags are the shrimp chow mein and I've gone ahead and plugged in our impulse sealer. From what I see here, it works when it's engaged, the light comes on. So we're gonna make sure that we are set to seven. Dive right in. The Mylar bags are going to be good at a seven. And what we're going to do is once we have the bag correctly positioned, you press down the handle firmly. The light and heater will stay on for a few seconds. Hold down the handle until the light goes out. So I believe from what I've read, it could take, you know, possibly eight to 10 seconds, but we'll. We'll kind of see how that goes. All right, I've got our three bags to start here and I've got the impulse sealer plugged in and we will go ahead and get this process started. It does say that on these bags, they have the notches right here and you want to seal right above that. And also some people do a seal and then reposition and do another seal to ensure that they have a very good seal so no oxygen is getting in. Also, I will be putting in the oxygen absorbers and don't want to forget that, so we'll do that right now. 
and here is what those come in. They come in a bag that's, of course, tightly sealed, and we're just going to uh, break into that, and they have a notch right there. We'll dump one in each bag. Take our bag of food, pull it tight, position it so it's above the notch, and then press down. So right now, the light just went off, and when the light comes back on is when we are supposed to release. waiting to see if this comes back on. So I'm just checking it. So I think I read that incorrectly. The light does not come back on for this. It basically says, once the bag is correctly positioned, press your handle down firmly, the light and heater will stay on, and then hold the handle until it goes out. Lift the handle and remove the bag. So this is a good seal. You can see it from this side much better. You can kind of see it's crimped. It's probably hard to tell from the light with the camera. So I'll do a reposition and show you from a different angle. So this is our different position so you can see it. So we got our bag and our absorber in there with food. Pull it tight. Lay it in there with it above the notch. The light is on. I don't know if you can see and then it goes out. And then you're supposed to be able to lift it then, so we'll do it faster. And it looks good. You see it goes from one end to the other. So we'll do our last one of these. So absorber, food. Light on, light off. Looks good. So I'll go ahead and label these with the shrimp chow mein and today's date, and we'll go ahead and do all of our other items of the spaghetti next. Okay, and here is our last tray of food that we're taking out, and this is the, of course, sliced apples, and since this doesn't have to be reconstituted to eat it or anything like that, I'm just going to go ahead and try one, and it's delicious. So, sorry to eat on here with you, but I had to try it just to see how it tastes. It is really good and we'll probably do some of these in a mylar bag and then some just in a jar because we'll probably eat them so let's put these in one as well so i'm going to go ahead and write on this bag at first and we're not going to worry about the weight because it doesn't matter 
And as I did notice, we were having a little bit of problem with the sealer. Like, I don't know if I'm holding it too long or if I need to increase the temperature on it or anything like that. So once again, it's just a little bit of a process. Seeing how this goes. So we have it pretty full. And amazingly, we have one oxygen absorber left. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. We will seal this up. Now, some people had said, and what I read in there about doing a double seal, I might go ahead and do that on some of these packages just to ensure that they are in safe, a safe position that they aren't going to bust open and then all go to waste. So, our last package of food. All right, our process is complete and we have our drain valve open and we'll just go ahead and do a natural defrost. So I will hit no defrost and it's quieted down finally. It's a pretty loud unit and we are all good here. Our trays are empty and now we just need to do a little cleanup. Woo. We are all done. We've got all of our food packaged. We've got six bags of spaghetti, three bags of shrimp chow mein and a bag of apples and then some for us to snack on now. Um, like I said before, I probably will go ahead and do another seal on these bags just to ensure. I might even go ahead and do it below the notch. We'll be cutting these open anyways, I'm sure. But there would be nothing worse than them spoiling, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, this is going to be a really cool thing for us. We are planning on getting out and kind of away from civilization on some trips and something like this will be perfect for making that happen. You don't have to worry about food, just make sure that you have enough water and a heat source to uh, reconstitute these back to their original state. So we will keep you guys updated on how that goes and if we get to try one. And of course we will film if and when we do our next cycle of food. Thanks for watching and click subscribe.